minute about the bill here, but if we can refrain from outbursts and so that we can get on with the business. And I thank you all for, for your patience and your time here. Okay. All right, the House come to order. And uh, Representative Foley, you asked a question of personal privilege. Yes, Mr. Speaker, Please, if I may. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd just like to address some of the comments that were directed at me. And I would actually say I agree with the good representative um, from Maui on some of the, on the things that he said. He said that, you know, as statements have been made earlier, that this has, these amendments have not gone through the normal review. They're outside the normal process. They're at the last moment. And um, we just need to, we, we, we can't look at these because of the, uh, the timeliness of this. Mr. Speaker, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree with this entire process from the special session all the way to these amendments right now. Have not gone through the normal review, are outside the normal process, and have been introduced at the very last moment. Mr. Speaker, we are talking about amendments that were never, that the, op, that the public never had the opportunity to review. I could not agree more. House draft one, the public was never given the opportunity to review, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. All Mr. right, Speaker. Uh, Representative, your question was directed to the representative, and will you please direct your question and uh, not go back to the, <laughs> your statements that you have now. Oh. You have, if you have a grievance yes, Mr. Speaker. as to the statement, state your grievance. Well, I would say that I don't have a grievance, but I can say that we stand shoulder to shoulder on amendments that have never been given to the public to review, Mr. Speaker. And I would like to agree with him to say, we need to take this process further. We need the, to allow the public to review these, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Speaker. And I say thank, I, I would like to say thank you, thank you very for, much. for bringing that up. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Very Speaker. Much. Okay. Well, thank you. All right, we're back to uh, amendment number 22. The, and uh, there Mr. was Speaker, a representative psyche call, before I, I get the, to her. Call for the question, but please it has been called. The speak. question has been called. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I believe you recognize me after you, you recognize the speaker from Kihei. You did, in fact, say that Representative Har would go after the representative from Kihei, so I would Representative Har, if you, wouldn't, you wish to make written comments? Um, actually, just two minutes, Mr. Speaker. I'll be very quick. You How know about I speak a minute? Quickly. Okay, a minute is fine. Okay, please. Thank you, please, Mr. Speaker. Please, Mr. Please. Speaker, I rise in support of the amended language, but not the underlying bill. Um, again, Mr. Speaker, I think this goes back to what was said previously about balancing the 14th Amendment rights as well as against our First Amendment protections. I think the reason we're struggling so much with this and the reason these four amendments are being uh, introduced is that in everything we do as legislators, in every bill we've introduced, in every bill we've passed, we've attempted to influence or regulate behavior. For the first time, Mr. Speaker, through this bill, we are now attempting to regulate thought, freedom of conscience, the freedom to believe what one person wants to believe. And that is absolutely protected under the First Amendment. And that is why this bill is so frightening and emotional for so many people, Mr. Speaker. We saw thousands of people come and testify, and they yes. literally broke down. Yes, That's sir. the issue, Mr. Speaker. And so, you know, I was so moved by one gentleman, Mr. Travis Augustine. He was registered as number 3895. He said, the bottom line is this. This bill, Senate Bill 1, does not protect an individual's rights to express himself or herself. It does not give us the right to believe what we want to believe. That's not the issue. The issue is not whether you believe what is right or wrong. That's not the issue. The issue is under the First Amendment, you absolutely have those protections. And so for the first time in history, in the history of the state of Hawaii, we are now attempting to regulate thought. And that's why it's such a scary premise for so many people, Mr. Speaker. Okay, and so respectfully, Mr. Speaker, for these reasons, I support the amended language because I urge this body to continue trying to balance the 14th Amendment with First Amendment protections. Okay. Mr. Thank Speaker, you, Mr. Thank you Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Uh, you're not, uh, we're given an opportunity to the maker of the motion to rebut. I Take like, your point. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd just like to um, vote in support of this amendment and ask that the words of the representative from Kapolei and Wahiwa be entered into the journals if they were my Very own. good. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. So ordered, but we will get to that later. Right now, I want to give the opportunity to the mover of the motion to give his final statement, Representative Makazushiro. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.
just to, just to summary, uh, summarize the uh, contents of this bill, again, I believe these are um, well-placed um, amendments. And for those who might be junior in, in tenure in this body, uh, this is part and parcel of the legislative process in the State House of Representatives. Floor amendments are put down upon bills for consideration by the body. Uh, there's nothing inappropriate to these floor amendments being made. Mr. Speaker, you and I know that these concepts and these principles herein have been debated and discussed in various forums, uh, both formal and informal, on this very important measure. Uh, you yourself, Mr. Speaker, as long as the member of the House received a packet of information from my office containing treatises and law review, review, review documents uh, discussing this very important issue of how you balance uh, First Amendment rights with due process, equal protection, liberties. So I don't think this is out of the box, being placed upon anyone by surprise. And again, Mr. Speaker, this has been the practice and procedures and traditions of this body for the last 20 years that I've been here regarding floor amendments. So I see nothing awry, and I'm not trying to uh, take anyone by surprise. The Connecticut law, Mr. Speaker, is maybe an appropriate place to start, but let's, let's remember that. Connecticut is one of those five states that had courts by edict or by decisions grant same-sex marriage. Connecticut, California, Iowa, Massachusetts, and New Jersey are those states where you have same-sex marriage today because of court interpretation of their equal protection laws. Popular vote was done in Wisconsin, Maine, and, and Maryland. And Washington, I mean Washington, Maine, and Maryland. The state legislatures were Vermont, New Hampshire, New York, Delaware, Minnesota, and Rhode Island. And that's why I suggest we look at those states. Mr. Speaker, this is such an important issue and a concern that came up several weeks ago when I was on the neighbor island is this. What happens if the religious exemptions are struck down as unconstitutional? Well, given the severability provision in this law, the law continues on without any protection to the religious uh, organizations with their facilities or their solemnization ceremonies or their marriage ceremonies. There is no protection for them. And the history is replete, Mr. Speaker, that once we pass this law with insufficient or inadequate or questionable laws that can not provide protections and they're deemed illegal or void, there is no protections. And that's why I ask Mr. Speaker for us to consider this and really think long and deep and hard before we get to the main motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. All right, there was a question to uh, cease debate. Is there a second to that? Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, can I have a short recess? Recess?